Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Very happy to have here in studio Chris Lambert. He is with uh, Film Colossus. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the show. Ah, nice to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Film Colossus. You are a film critic, but mm -hmm. Film Colossus itself, your, your uh, company, is a little different than just critiquing films. So give us a little background. Yeah, you know, I was uh, watching all these movies and I'd be like, wow, No Country for Old Men, that ending is really mind-blowing like what's right. going on there and I'd read 30 reviews and no critics were really addressing the end of the film it was all spoiler free you know this is just a plot but I had wanted somebody to do more analysis about the movie and explain more like you know this is what's happening about the movie it's about generational push and okay. how the younger generations move the older generations out of power which yeah. is really sad. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's when you look at that emotional aspect right. of it, that ending of the film is pretty heartbreaking. Right. And uh, you know, nobody else was writing that kind of thing, so I was like, but let's let's do that um, and be sort of the site that people can go to after movies if they have questions about like time travel and Looper sure. or oh yeah, that there's <laughs> plenty to talk about there. Yeah. Absolutely. So just in general, getting uh, some of the questions answered. Yeah, and we do more uh, analytical pieces too that try to balance entertainment with uh, depth of knowledge. So we'll look at something like uh, a movie called Purge, which was just yeah. sort of a throwaway horror movie, but look at how the violence of that movie differs from video game violence and right. why people get so up in arms about video game violence and not the violence in a movie like Purge. Right. And some philosophical questions I'm imagining are coming up quite often, right? Yeah, well, I really like neuroscience too. So there's a movie like Silver Linings Playbook, which it just seems like this nice movie where a guy that has bipolar disorder uh, does dancing and that helps <laughs> right. him calm himself. <laughs> it's not quite but the whole story. <laughs> there's actually like a lot of uh, neuroscience behind that s that supports you know, studying an action like dancing for so long that can help you calm your emotions and have less mood swings. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I often, and I took a class uh, on philosophy and film, mm -hmm. and I, I was particularly taken by that. In fact, it kind of changed my direction about how I look at film. Uh, from there on out, and it, you know, it included some some great classics like *The Razor's Edge*, uh, uh, *What Dreams May Come*, some different, you know, some some certainly some different films, but uh, that had sort of, I suppose, the philosophical questions that we all want answers to: Why are we here, and where are we going, and what really matters, and you know, <laughs> and we tackle that with film often, but sometimes we don't see that as an underlying or as an undercurrent to the film. Absolutely, and you know, you can see that in a movies as diverse as Fight Club or Groundhog Day. Oh, I love Fight Club for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, both films to me are really about how we destroy ourselves, whether willingly or unwillingly, and what brings us to the point of self-destruction. <laughs> um, I'm well on the path right now. You have no <laughs> idea. Uh, well, good luck. <laughs> right? I hope it Maybe goes well for you. Maybe you can give me some answers on how to, how to write the end of the story for me. Yeah. Maybe that's something we should talk about, too. People do kind of try to live their life often like they see in film. Mm. We see that quite a little bit. Do you, is that something, as a, as a critic and with your company that you've seen, uh, of, of folks that w watch film? That they uh, it, then try to... Do we all sort of kind of incorporate that into our sort of story? Well, I think that there's lessons that we take away from all art that can impact us. Uh, there's a movie playing at Slamdance called Chemical Cut, which is really about a 23-year-old girl that's lost. And instead of trying to go about it in a logical way, she just jumps into a modeling career that's very harsh um, she's very unhappy, her friends are unsupportive, her family's unsupportive, and it beats her down. And uh, what she do to recover from that? Uh, how does she heal? How does she take positive steps forward? And I think that's something where if somebody watches that movie, they really are going to be able to come away from that film with maybe a healthier understanding of what to do or what not to do. Interesting. Which is what I really like about film. You know, it's one thing to see, I mean, I watch Fast and Furious and then I go out and want to speed a little of more. Of course you do, everybody yeah, does, right? right? You grip the wheel just a little bit tighter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I watched that Aaron Paul Need for Speed and I was like, I need to drive. I'm not right. going right home. I am driving around and feeling cool. Uh, so movies can definitely have that kind of you know, maybe short-term impact, right. uh, but then you watch a movie like Groundhog Day that I saw for the first time when I was seven, and 
it's stayed with me so much to where it's really? a film that I go back and watch again and again and again as how do I improve my life and what does this teach me about improving my life? I love that, uh, looking at it that from that depth. Mm. Talk to me, we have just a, a moment or two and I want to talk about Slam Dance. That's what you guys are entirely focused on this year. Why? Why is Slam Dance so important? <laughs> well, uh, maybe a weird comparison is uh, Slam Dance to me is like a farmer's market for film. Okay. Uh, with uh, I say that because of the discovery that happens at a farmer's market. You right. don't quite know what vendors are going to be there, what products they're going to have. It's different than the grocery store experience where you know what brands are going to be there, you know generally what kind of items you're going right. to encounter. But the farmer's market, it could be somebody that's been making donuts at home for 20 years and finally brings them out for sale. Everybody and, loves them. Yeah, they're better than anything you've ever had. And <laughs> I think Slam Dance is doing something like that. It's really unique. A lot of the things that it offers aren't movies that you're going to be able to find in your local cinema right. or on Netflix. And you may not get to see them again. Yeah, it's a really unique yeah. opportunity to see a lot of filmmakers at the beginning of their career. You know, a highlight of other festivals is that you're seeing the famous people there. They're known entities. But you can go to Slam Dance in 1999 and you're seeing Christopher Nolan before right. he's Christopher Nolan. And then you have that experience of, I was there. And Slam Dance is great for having an eye for that kind of talents. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it definitely is my favorite too. <laughs> Talk to me for just a moment about how we can find uh, Film Colossus and how we can interact with it. Uh, well, the good old www.filmcolossus.com. Okay. And then uh, we are active on Facebook and on Twitter and those are sort of the best ways to make requests All right. for movies. Uh, if you watch a movie and you have a question like why did the love story in James Bond happened the way that it did, or why didn't uh, the villain's plan work in the way that we thought it might? Okay. Um, we'll answer that kind of thing either quickly on Twitter or we'll write a piece about it to kind of cover it in more detail. Uh, there were a lot of questions about Star Wars. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to ask you one. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the only th maybe the one that doesn't really spoil things for people too much. Mm -hmm. Ray is Luke's daughter. Ooh. Yeah, that's getting into an uh, interesting debate. There's not a lot of information. We talk about inroads in a film. Mm -hmm. So often, like a movie like No Country for Old Men, the inroads in the title. Right. So that sets up the idea of generational push. Uh, the story with Ray, uh, we have some information that hints at Luke's daughter. Yeah. We have some information that could hint Han's at Han's daughter. Han's daughter, Obi-Wan's daughter, or like granddaughter. Uh, that's one of the popular theories going around right now. Okay. Um, so I, I think with a lot of Star Wars, they, J.J. Yeah. Uh, Abrams did Lost, right? And right. Lost put forth more questions than it answered. And in fact, I don't think even the writers knew the answers <laughs> in some cases. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think that that tends to be, uh, you've seen that in Damon Lindelof's career moving right. forward, and you've seen that a bit in J.J. Abrams' career yeah. moving forward. So I Alias think we just, had that as well. Mm, we just have to be a little patient with the trilogy. And Ryan Johnson wrote episode eight, and I think he wrote nine as well. Right. And, you know, he's the guy that did Looper. He's really detailed and smart. So I think so we'll whatever. we get some answers. I think we're going to get some answers. I hope so, because you know we're not going to get him with J.J. Abrams. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so very much for being here, Chris Lambert. Yeah. It is Film Colossus. Filmcolossus.com <laughs> is where you can find more information, and of course, uh, keep track of what's what he's doing here at Slam Dance. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having right. me. We've got a lot more coming up here on the Mountain Morning Show. Uh, we'll be back right after these messages.